Welcome to our review on choosing materials. One of the most common kinds of questions that's likely to come up in relation to this topic is they're going to give you a table of information about a range of different materials and ask you to identify the best material for a particular use and to justify your choice. So it'll be a question much like the one on the screen here to identify the best polymer to use to make a cup to hold hot drinks and justify your choice using data from the table. So when we get one of these questions, we need to think about the actual purpose. In this case, it's going to hold hot drinks. So when we have a look at the column headings, we've got the cost per kilograms, its tensile strength, its melting point, and a maximum usable temperature. So what we need to think about first of all is, which one can we actually use that's going to be able to hold a hot drink first of all? So when we consider hot drinks, obviously the absolute maximum that we'd need to go with is something that's 100 degrees, because what we've got is boiling water is at 100 degrees. So as soon as we have a little look and see that there's two of them on the list that actually have a maximum usable temperature of 85 and 70, then it's not really going to be a good choice at this point. So what we'll find is the only real option is the polypropene. So even though we've not looked at the other column headings, you've eliminated two out of your three choices from just the one. If you were to look at the melting point, it's an irrelevance because we're not going to be putting in drinks over 100 degrees in a cup. So that's not really relevant to us whatsoever. The tensile strength, again, could be useful to us because when we're thinking about sort of squeezing it, then yes, that is important. And the cost, you don't want to pick something that's ridiculously expensive, but you can justify your answer quite easily just using the maximum usable temperature and then back it up with a couple of the others. But don't feel like you have to use every single property when you're given one of these questions. There could well be one that has no relevance whatsoever. If I'd given you their ability to conduct electricity, for example, no one cares when we're talking about a cup to hold hot drinks. You're not going to be connecting that into an electrical socket. And if you are, then you're probably not going to be drinking that many hot drinks out of it anyway. The next thing we need to consider when choosing materials is what's called the life cycle assessment. Now, life cycle assessments are a cradle to grave analysis of the impact of making, using and disposing of a manufactured product. And this is something that every manufacturer has to go through for any product they have. So in terms of the cradle, this is where we're looking at the raw materials. So how do we obtain them? How do we process them? We're looking at the materials we're using to make the product and also the energy and water that we're using in the processes. The use phase, this is where we're actually using the product. So what energy does it need? What water and substances does it need to maintain it? And are there any in terms of the actual maintenance? So do we need to take it for cleaning on a regular basis? And then the grave part is once that item has come to the end of its useful life, what energy do we need to dispose of the product? What space do we need to dispose of the product? And we need to also consider things like can any of it be recycled and how easily do those materials decompose at the end? The reason that manufacturers carry out these life cycle assessments is to identify stages that we could improve upon or to find alternative materials that can actually carry out the same job. So if we had a life cycle assessment and we worked out that 25% of the energy was used in production, 70% in its use and 5% in its disposal, the actual section we'd want to look at to try to improve would be the use phase, because that's where the vast majority of the energy is. It would be a bit of a waste of time to try to find different ways to dispose of it, because that's only 5% of the energy used. So in the use, it might be that we could find an alternative material that maybe doesn't need cleaning so much or a different energy source that's renewable and therefore reduces that impact. So it's a case of going back over the actual product and thinking, is there something we can alter to make this more sustainable in the long term? Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain how the uses of materials are related to their properties. You can choose an appropriate material for a given purpose when given information in a table. 
you can describe the basic principles of a life cycle assessment and evaluate data from a life cycle assessment to say where improvements could be made.